Okay, so we got our NB tail light here. In order to take it apart, we gotta start by removing those three screws here. And they are a Torx bit. It says T-7 is the size. Go ahead and take these out. And it's all wrapped around this little hook set up here in the back. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put it in the oven. All right, this is gonna be the really scary part for a lot of people, but I've actually done this quite a few times and I've never had any trouble. So what I'm gonna do, I've actually already preheated. I've set it at 225 degrees. It's actually, 200 is the minimum for my stove. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, there's plastic in the, in the oven. That's a really bad idea. Well, it is, but we're doing it at such a low temperature we just need to heat up the adhesive that holds the lens onto the housing. And there's gonna be a couple steps that we're gonna do. I've seen a couple different videos out there. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. I like to use a piece of cardboard and lay down on the rack to keep the rack from burning or kind of melting into any of our plastic. The other thing too is I'm gonna put it on the lens side up. And obviously I'm, I've already made sure that my rack has enough room uh, for my light. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it now. It's gonna go ahead and bake. I'm gonna set a timer for about 15 minutes. Somewhere between 200 and 250 for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, it kinda depends. Uh, I've done Chevy Silverado headlights and they seem to need a, a bit more heat than um, a lot of the more uh, Japanese brands. So while the NV2 light is in the oven, I'm gonna kinda show you what we're gonna do when we pull the light out of the oven because we want to get the lens off of the housing as quickly as possible while it's still hot. You'll notice that there's kind of a lip that goes around most of the tail light, but right here where there's this little flap that kind of bolts on the, the top of the trunk area, the lip actually doesn't cover that area. So this is where I'm going to start just getting it up enough to where I can get under it enough to pull it out. Now one of the other things you have to be careful of is the light is actually curved quite a bit. And if on the bottom, you'll see there are these kind of lines in the molding. This is actually the direction. You wanna be parallel with that as you take the lens off. So I've actually had it before down here where I'm trying to get a screwdriver to pry it out and I actually break off some of the inner lip of the lens part because I was trying to pry it out this way instead of making it go up this way. So it sounds kind of complicated and once you see it for the first time, like you'll get it. Another thing that we're gonna have to focus on as we're pulling the lens off is there's actually these little kind of clips that will hold the lens onto the body. So I actually need to get our screwdriver in here and help pry the body away from the lens a little bit. All right, there's our 15 minutes. And again, I am wearing gloves because this is gonna be hot. It might not burn us. Ooh, yeah, it's definitely hot. Even with my gloves on. But oh yeah, look at that. I barely have to put any pressure on it at all. And the lens just kind of glides right off. Whew, yeah, that's hot. I'm telling you though, that 15 minute mark at 200 degrees, I've had the best luck. Oh, I forgot about the little tabs over here on the bottom. Just slowly moving my screwdriver on, and then my this tar kind of adhesive will get all over your screwdriver, and it's kind of nasty stuff, really. So now that this is coming off, and again, I need to go kind of straight up with it. Let me 
close and shut that off. And you'll see all the tar adhesive stuff coming off. So I'm gonna clean that up real quick. I am gonna let it cool off because it is rather warm uh, before we do the next step. I wanna talk a little bit about the bottom base. Uh, we're not, actually not gonna do anything with this. Uh, in my other tail light, I use the tracing LED arrows over here. And this piece actually comes out. There's a couple little clips and stuff that hold it in place. And I had taken this and I had cut some ABS, uh, actually the same material as this, and made a plate that goes over this to hold the, the LED. And it's okay, like it's kind of neat, but I can see it inside the tail light uh, in the daytime and it kind of bugs me. And there's a couple of problems that it creates that I don't really want to try to solve. And that is that now you're using an LED light as a turn signal and it doesn't pull the same load. So you get the, what's called the hyper flash. And with the tracing arrows, you only get the first arrow with the hyper flash. It doesn't give the, the electricity doesn't flow long enough to it to actually trace all the way across. So I've looked into a couple solutions. Yes, you could get the little piece that plugs in that uses the electricity to generate heat and it pulls a little bit more from the system and it tricks it into thinking that there's a light there, but those things get really, really hot and you have to be careful where you mount them. And to me, if it gets that hot that it would melt plastic, it's a fire hazard and I don't have to worry about mounting in my trunk somewhere and my carpet catching on fire, anything like that. The other solution is, is I actually purchased it because I had planned on doing those from the beginning is a little module that plugs in under the dash uh, for your turn signal relay and it changes the what the car is looking for as far as the, the, the draw from the lights but <laughs> you have to change out all the turn signal bulbs to LEDs just to load so that every light has the same draw and I really don't want to go and change all of my lights literally just to get one little tracing arrow. So I have a, a bright red LED bulb that'll go in here for the, the brake light. We're going to mount the running light on the lens and then we're just going to use the, I'm in this video, we're going to show you just how to use the original OEM bulb. We're just going to rewire it so that this is then the turn signal and it'll basically give the same effect. Um, to me, running that three inch LED module that I had picked up as my brake light, it just turned out that it wasn't quite bright enough and it's, it's a safety issue. You know, I don't want anybody rear ending me. Uh, we're already in a small car as it is. Um, the way that I did the other light is actually took each little piece here. It's actually just a little rubber boot that sits over the wires. Um, and then these wires go to the connectors inside here. Well, if you take this out, you can actually yank the connectors out and just gut this whole thing. I just took the wires, ran it through, ran it through the, this connector, plugged the connector back in, and I just filled in the back of this with some RVT. So if you really feel compelled to do that, that's how I did the other one. But like I said, I wasn't happy with it. So we have this 120 millimeter ring from Super Bright LEDs. It's actually affordable compared to the other one that I originally tried. Now the only problem is, is this isn't actually a perfect circle. It's, a, it's an oval and this doesn't fully fit all the way inside. What it does do, however, is one side will fit all the way on and the other side, there's just enough that the LEDs that kind of stick off will go right around this lip. So all the way in on this side and then just clipped in enough to hold it there on the other side. That's what, the, that's what you see on the other side or uh, in my other video. So now the way that we're actually gonna glue this down, 
we're going to use two different silicones. First, we're going to start with uh, clear RVT silicone. I just bought this at AutoZone down the street. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a bead all the way around this because there is actually some depth to it. There's like a channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down RVT so it's basically flush with this. And the reason why we're going to use clear is because we actually do want the light to go through the RVT, through the reflector, and through the other side. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of stuff for it to go through. Isn't it going to dim it down? Actually, we have to install a module to dim this down even further because it's so bright, it would be as bright as like a tail light. So there's no worries about it being, being too bright. And then once we let this dry overnight, we're going to put black RVT around it on the top. And we have to get really good around the edges here too so that we don't get any light leaking around it. Let me get my RVT here. I'm just going to go some of these spots are a little thin so I'll have to go back and that does not smell very good You want to make sure that it gets all, uh, a solid piece all the way through, all the way around. Otherwise, if you have a gap, you might not get light evenly in, a, in the ring. All right, that's pretty good, I'd say. So, that gets pretty close. I'm gonna try to make it even all the way around. I got a little too much on this side and not enough over here. I'm gonna try to deposit some. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, so now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put this kind of on the bottom. So now I'm gonna Push this down in. And make sure that we got a good amount all the way around. Yep. All this is looking good. Now, on this side, because the, the LED actually went in, you can see there's a bulge. I actually want to remove this. Because, uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to go around over this with black RVT, and that's going to help hold in the light. So we want to have enough room to lay more on top of this later. That's good until tomorrow. So this stuff, uh, and we put this on pretty thick. So I actually think instead of the 24 hours, I'm gonna wait 48 hours just to make sure that that gets enough time to, to really dry and harden all the way through. Uh, when I did the other one, I did it 24 hours after and it was still a little wet. I mean, it was still, like it was dry on the outside, but deep in the middle, it still had a ways to go. So I wanna make sure this dries really, really good. So this is definitely not a project that you're just gonna do like in a day. Um, I highly recommend that you buy a second set of lights so that you, know, you can keep driving your car while you're doing this. Cause the other thing is too, is you don't wanna do this to the original because what happens if you screw something up? So now we've let this dry for a couple days. Can, feel it and it is definitely solid some part seems to have shrunk a little bit and that's fine um, I'm sure at this point you're really excited to kind of get an idea of what it looks like so 
the easiest way to do this, there's, there's two wires. One is silver, one is gold, or a bronze color. And if I remember correctly, the bronze is the negative. And you can just take a regular 9-volt battery. The light that we have here is, I think, like 8 to 14 or 16 volts. Um, most automotive lights are going to have a range like that because you're, you're not going to be running a true 12 volts all the time. Once the car gets running, your alternator gets going, it's going to uh, go up a couple volts. And usually 9 volt is enough to make it come on. So what I want to point out here is that when we turn it on, you can see that there's a lot of light that just kind of goes in every direction. So what we're going to try to do right now is we're going to take some, some black RVT silicone and we're going to wrap it or kind of just mold it around this whole assembly here to keep any of the light from spilling into these other areas where we don't want it to go. But if we look at it from the front, it's actually looking pretty good. So we're, uh, we're like halfway there. Uh, this is probably the second toughest part uh, next to actually mounting this up. Uh, once, once we get this wrapped in black, uh, we just got to drill a hole for this wire to come through the back of the housing, the, the, the base part. So basically we're just going to drill like a little hole up here. Oh, that's the bottom. And drill a hole somewhere, like maybe under here. Let that wire come out. We're just going to wire that into the regular housing and then put it back together. So, I, I don't want to say we're in the home stretch yet, but it's looking pretty good. So, what I've got is I've got some black RVT silicone. I've got a flathead screwdriver. I've got a little piece of cardboard here. This is actually a template from when uh, I made the angled turn signals. But I'm just going to put some uh, silicone on here, scoop it up with the, uh, the screwdriver, and then use that to kind of fill in some of these gaps around here. Uh, obviously, when we get around the sides, we want to be as careful as possible. But uh, but if you if you spill a little bit, uh, the nice thing about the the silicone is it wipes up easy. The only big recommendation here is don't wear nice clothes because if you this RVT is really nasty stuff. If it gets on any of your clothes, it'll absolutely ruin it. I've already or ruined a, a pair of shorts and a pair of pants. Uh, just doing my other tail light, so um, I'm also going to wear a glove for this, and I've got lots of paper towel here as well. I think this inside edge is probably going to be the toughest, because we want to get as close as we can with it, but uh, this is just something that you just got to take your time and just really focus on getting it right where it needs to be. You want to make sure that you get. I just noticed there's a couple like little bubble spots where I kind of want to, where I kind of missed a little bit. You definitely want to go back and make sure that it's all completely covered because you don't want any light leaking anywhere. Now this black stuff, you don't have to get it super thick. Um, it does not let very much light go through at all. It's pretty much a full blackout. Now this part right here, there's a little lip 
that kind of sticks out from the reflector. This part's going to be a little difficult to get the RVT around, so I'm just going to kind of shove it in there and do like the best that I can to try to get a little bit of black around there. But I'm not going to get overly worried about it because the more you you put on it might show around the the ring a little bit um, you can't actually see through the red part um, but I'm just gonna do my best to get a little bit through there a little bit of light leak we can't stop it all But we could get most of it. Alright, so one of the things that's happening is I put the RVT on. I don't know if you can see, but the black is kind of getting on the actual lens itself. It's not looking perfect, so I'm gonna take a Q-tip. I'm gonna clean off some of the RVT that has spilled over. But again, have to be very, very careful. All right, looks like we got most of it all the way around. So now it's time to do the top. I feel like I'm decorating a cake. And this is all the icing and I've got to make it like perfectly flat. All right, now I didn't necessarily leave this for last on purpose. It's just kind of the way it ended up. And you don't have to get too crazy with it. But I'm just kind of just bending the wire straight up and then just laying it thick all around it and this is basically done make sure my wires don't get in my rvt there so i mean it looks pretty good you can see a little bit of black coming through this won't be as noticeable these parts let me show you what i mean So if you notice around here, there's just a little bit of black that you can kind of see through the lens. But when the lens is together, these areas will be in black cavities, so it won't be noticeable. I try to clean this side up. This is probably going to be the most visible side. So I, that's where I took the Q-tip and got some of it I mean it's not perfect it's really tough because this area sticks out so you're trying to kind of get it into like a crevice but but yeah and then if you want to test it to see if there's any areas that we missed and kind of need to go back and, and adjust we can grab another 9 volt here And you can see, notice that this time, it's definitely not a lot of light that bleeds around the edge. So we shouldn't see much light at all looking at it from the back side, but if we look at it from the other side, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. So now uh, I'm just gonna go through and I can see a couple spots that I kind of missed where the light's leaking through the black. I'm just gonna go over those spots a little bit more uh, and then this is going to be ready to, ready to dry. So 
when this goes on, I've got this guy is going to come out near the top. Now I could drill a hole, but I think what's going to be easy enough is I'm just going to take my little poker here. Because I really don't want to pull out my Dremel. We don't need a very big hole. Perfect. So, and then it's just going to come out right there, and we can wire that into the harness. But before I put this back together, Just to ensure that we get a good seal, I'm going to take a little RVT silicone and I'm going to run a bead all the way around here just to give it that little extra. All right, back in the kitchen, got it set at 225. Got my cardboard in there. Throw my light. And I'm gonna give it like 10 minutes. We don't need to go quite as long as last time. We wanna make sure it comes apart easy, but this, we just gotta push it a little bit in. And while that's going, went ahead and got those little screws that we took off and my Torx bit handy so we can screw it together as soon as I take the headlight out of, or tail light out of the oven. All right, got my gloves again. You can also tell because the little clips are in where they're supposed to be. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to get off some of that adhesive. So now let's get in our screws. All right, so now that it's cooled off a bit, uh, now we can seal this up. I'm just gonna take some, some black silicone that I have left here. Just put a good amount. So we need to let all this RVT dry and the adhesive settle. So I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. Take our amber light out. We're gonna put in this red one. That's gonna go. three-way here and our backup goes there so here's a real quick way to change brake and turn signal well first off you're gonna to need to know which wires which and I'm gonna show a diagram on the screen but basically I figured out all the wiring already so the green and black with the, the green with the black stripe is the positive of the turn signal and the solid green is the positive of the brake light. So if we swap those two, our brake light will now be in the middle and our turn signal will be the bright light over here. So I, I found out that if you take a really tiny screwdriver 
and stick it in there. There's just a little clip that holds that together. And the nice thing is, is that you don't even have to splice the wire. If you just pull the green and the black stripe out of this harness, and this is the one that plugs into the car. Now we've changed uh, those lights and we didn't have to splice any wires yet. So basically this guy's done. I'll put him in here. And one of the other things I want to mention too is the, this is an NB2 tail light and the NB2 tail light has a unique uh, pigtail harness here with the lights on it than the NB1 harness. So everything that I'm talking about now is going to refer to the NB2 housing. All right, so now we have our white wire here, and our white wire is actually the running light, which we now need to use this to feed our ring, and we also need to tie into ground somewhere. So we can either tie in all of the grounds, uh, just go to one. If you notice here, you've got three black wires, but on this side there's only one, so you have a common ground. So all we have to do is make sure that we ground out uh, the negative on this to any of these black wires and basically that's it it's real simple and it can be undone that that is the key feature to this is everything that we're doing can be reversed and you can go back to stock which i think any mod that you can can do that has the possibility of going back to stock i mean that that's a big plus so we need to splice our white wire I'm gonna do it right in the middle. That'll give us the most amount of room if we have to splice this back together. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the, the ground as well, just so in that way I can get some heat shrink tubing on, on these ends. Now one of the other things that I did is I used one of these little modules to plug in in between the car and the ring just so that I could adjust the brightness of the ring. So I went ahead and took one of these uh, kind of adjustment modules. Now I'm gonna run it off of a nine volt battery. And one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the brightness. I already played with it for a minute, but uh, yeah, how about we not touch those two together? And these have a memory to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it at its lowest setting. That's what I want for my running light. And that's how I have the, the first one in. And I'm pretty happy with the setup. It seems to be pretty reliable so far. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wire this in so that it's permanent in between the pigtail harness and the light itself. And then I'm just gonna wrap this in some black electrical tape just to make sure that no dust or water or anything gets to it and then that way we can always come back and, and adjust it later and I'm not gonna worry about cutting this down or making it smaller I'd actually rather have a small loom of wire behind than to cut myself too short because there's enough room we can tuck it in and, and you know tie it up now I've done a lot of car stereos and, and things like that and I've always used electrical tape and I've never, never had a problem with wires coming undone or just bad connections or anything like that. So I'm actually just going to use electrical tape and then use heat shrink tubing over top of it just to help keep the electrical tape together because since uh, I do live in Arizona and it gets so hot during the day, I want to make sure this stuff isn't going to melt. Because I've seen electrical tape get pretty soft when it gets really hot. The other reason, which is not a very good reason, is the heat shrink tubing I bought is just a little too big. And so this help adds a little bit of thickness to it. But either way, it'll be 
double insulated. I think this is probably overkill. I like to get both sides when I do it. Just to make sure I get the maximum shrinkage. All right, so now for this, this cable is pretty long. I think I will cut it down a bit just to make things a little easier when we have to do the wire tuck. I mean, come on, this thing's over a foot long. Again, I'm paying attention to my wiring. I've done this so many times, I, I kind of know, so I forget that I need to say it, but I'm, I'm doing the, the bronze copper color to the negative, and the silver is going to go to the positive. Oh, I made a mistake. Check it out. Forgot to connect uh, my negative up to this other negative here. So, back apart we go. Now our white wire is not going to do anything because we're not going to run the low intensity light on this side. I am, however, just going to wrap it up. Okay, now everything should be in place. Now originally all of these wires wrapped up from the bottom. Now all I want to do is I'm going to wrap this up with electrical tape just to make sure that no dust and water get inside. Gonna tuck that kind of down in there, and basically our light's ready to go in. Put in my other light. I'll pull the rubber to its flush. Plug it in. Now let's see what we got. off to the side. To show you the difference between my first one and this one, I've been running the tail lights for a while now and they seem to be pretty reliable but I ran into an unexpected consequence where the cruise control stopped working. And some research on a forum, I found that for whatever reason, running an LED bulb messes with uh, part of the cruise control system and makes it stop working. So I plan to actually replace the LED brake light with just a red incandescent bulb because uh, I don't want to mess with other modules and stuff. So you notice that this side's a lot brighter. I feel a lot better about that. And it's way less work. It's just a bulb rather than trying to mount a module and all kinds of other crap. Once you've plugged in and ensured that everything is working, put the bolts and everything back in place and screw it down. And you're done.